Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar. As usual, you know, my pleasure <laughs> to be here with you. Hello, Jack. Uh, okay, you are asking about Euro and the technical perspective. We can talk a bit about that once we finish the session. Okay, the idea today is have an educative session. Before starting, I want to share something with you all guys. I remember that when I start uh, studying forex trading, right? Uh, my teacher never ever teach me a trading strategy, right? Uh, he gave me the tools. He teach me how to use and how to understand one and each single technical indicator, how to understand what the indicator means, and then he encouraged me to test them, to combine them, to uh, trade, paper trade, uh, demo trade, but trade with those indicators and find the weakness and strength of each indicator. So the general idea today is first uh, sharing with you how the ADX works and what it's useful for, okay, and some uh, tips about filters and other strategies. But, uh, you know, uh, knowing which which tools you are working is the most important thing you need to know in the sports market, right? Uh, understanding that, and my, my teacher always said, if you only have a hammer, you will be hammering everything around. The fact is that a hammer is good to put a nail, but it's not good to remove the nail from any wood, right? So, uh, for different market situations, for different conditions, we have different tools. We need to learn to use each and one single of them. And well, that's the idea today. Anyway, it's Friday, you know, and Fridays I'm usually extremely, extremely relaxed. I will be going slowly, okay, I will share an introduction. And after that, I will check if you make comments or questions, okay? Anyway, first of all, I will check, okay, hi Boyki and AT. Nice to see you here. I will check with Adinda that everything's fine. Sorry, I removed the camera in case the uh, the room questions are loaded, overcoming. Okay, and I hope we are fine. So let's get started, right? So that's the idea. Explain to you how to use and understand this indicator. Okay, the fact is that uh, there's a one concept related to ADX that most of us. Uh, don't consider related to the indicator, but it's there. That concept is volatility. You know, uh, market is extremely volatile. Sorry, lately, uh, I believe that as years combined, volatility increase and increase. Of course, we have times uh, during the I don't know summer vacations, Christmas vacations. You know, when uh, volatility decreases a lot, we have also intraday decreases. Movements in, uh, in volatility, late American session and until Asia is fully active. Yet again, that volatility, that movement in price, right? That is not directional. I know many doctors, also, sorry, said that a volatility is a directional movement. Uh, the concept is not complete. Volatility not only move, involves direction, but the speed, right? Uh, I would relate more volatility with the speed move of a movement, right, that with the direction, okay. For measuring the direction, that's why we have this ADX. This indicator uh, is used to forecast uh, the trend, okay. That's the idea. It's tell me the strength of the current trend. Uh, Wes Wilder was the developer of this ADX, okay, since we have something. Okay. Anyway. Uh, okay, Mod, no problem. Uh, as I was saying, uh, this indicator was developed to measure the strength of current trend. There are a couple of tips we will be sharing right now about how to understand and how and where and how. Anyway, I was saying, uh, uh, Wales Weiler, sorry, the developer of ADX says that the only thing directly proportional to volatility Okay, is the oscillation amplitude, saying that this one is the distance price covers in a certain period of time. Okay, in our case, let's say that the oscillator amplitude is the distance between maximum and or minimum of a certain session. That session could be five minutes, an hour, uh, 
a day, right? In this case, we are starting with a daily Eurodollar chart because it's easier to read an indicator in bigger time frames. The bigger time frames are easier to read indicators. When you turn to smaller time frames, they turn a bit more messy. However, if you understand how the indicator works and you learn to manage it, you will be also able to trade in smaller time frames with this one. Okay? Anyway, to give sense to all these concepts, we have decided numbers uh, of more than one session, right? Uh, in order to find an average the probable, uh, that will help us forecast future price movements. And that's exactly what this indicator is using by default the 14 period uh, average. Okay? You can change it. In fact, I discovered that for one hour charts, both for euro dollar and Australian dollar, uh, dollar, right? Uh, setting your ADX at 10, alright, could be a good and faster way to get signals and reading in the market, right? That's something I find out. You should check it. Uh, I forgot to say something, sorry, at the beginning of the webinar, and last interruption. Um, all the backtesting I do, it's very important to you to understand that, is in a United Kingdom MetaTrader, okay? Uh, my time zone is the GMT, right? If you test the strategies in a different time zone, in with a different meta trader that, for example, has American time uh, zone, uh, the results will probably be different. Okay, then daily candles open at different levels and close at different levels for all those candles also. You will find out that in one hour or smaller time frame, no, there you will find different. Okay, but in bigger time frames, numbers will be different, right? Uh, I don't know, for an American session, for a UK, a meta trader, right? Today will end, at, well, today will end, okay? The um, session will be closing around 2, 2 p.m. and for an American one later on the day. So keep that in mind when someone talks to you about testing a trading strategy or the, uh, Reliable of the trading strategy. Anyway, back to the indicator. Sorry, last interruption. Uh, to use it to forecast market, okay, we have the first basic principle, right? As higher is the indicator value, the higher is uh, the chance of a trend to change. And on the other hand, as lower is the indicator, more weak is current trend, right? The indicator, the ADX line, is the black one you see at the bottom of my screen. That is the line we need to check first. In this particular case, we have, we are seeing that for euro dollar in daily charts is strongly bullish, okay? Keep in mind that, okay, the, the, the ADX rising, okay, is not telling me that the trend is bullish, and the ADX falling is not telling me that the trend is bearish, right? We could see, okay, like in here, in this case, see what happened here. Trend was strongly bearish and the indicator was rising. It's telling me the strength of the trend, not the direction, okay? As long as the indicator keeps rising, the trend will continue, in this case, a bearish one. Either to determine if it's bearish or bullish, the dominant trend, or the signal or the entry point, we we'll take the other two ones. But let's start with this one, okay? With the ADX line, right? So, concept, I do believe it's clear. As longer it highs rises, okay? As stronger is the trend, okay? No matter if bearish, like in this particular case, or bullish that like we are seeing right now, okay? Okay, well, having made a point of that, I have just told you that as higher is the indicator value, the higher is the chance of the trend to change, right? Where is the trend going to change? How high is high? That will depend on the time frame you have or you are seeing the chart. Usually, readings above 60 in the indicator, and you see that the euro dollar reach exactly 59.50 or so in here, right? Readings above 60 are extremely rare. Okay, so when the trend keeps rising, like in this case, that keeps rising, indicator keeps going higher. Once it reached the 60 level, okay, it's given me a warning that that previous trend could
could already be accepted or a clause to finish and change. And exactly that is what happened in particular in here. In fact, I was seeing also, sorry, okay, in a smaller time frame, I would change to the four hour chart. You can see when the euro spiked to 134.40 intraday high past uh, Thursday, I believe. Uh, uh, indicator also reached the 60 level and then starts to fade, telling me that the upside strength was also fading, right? So the test of this 60 level from the ADX line means that if I'm following that, the rally, that's my exit zone, right? That's the point I have to close my trade, right? In, and we are talking about general concepts. We are going to go in deep slowly. And I want to make uh, this as much clear as possible. Anyway, um, for different pairs and different time frames, right? This spike, I have just told you that readings about 60 are extremely rare. Okay, you can draw your own resistance and support levels inside the indicator, right? Uh, if you move, I don't know, we could move to one hour, right? I will try to do it slowly because I know that's not a good idea to do it too fast. Okay, for example, in the euro dollar for one hour time frame, right? I see that the pair barely reached 50 area, right? So I will keep going backwards. In here, I find a reading around 60, a, a, a reading 55. That means that this level I have just marked is not strong enough. Okay? I need to keep looking. But you can do this exercise of drawing your own resistance area for each pair in each time frame and trying to locate the exact level from the indicator where the price usually, or usually changed direction. Okay? Anyway. Uh, back to the technical. Let's go back to our daily and keep on reading the indicator. Uh, uh, apart from that, there are basic principle that says that uh, uh, as long as the ADX line keeps rising, the trend will probably continue. Okay, we have two more trend lines or indicators in our chart. Okay, okay, the plus the I line okay this red one right the red one that is the sum of uh of the an, of an average of all upside movements right the red is the positive one and we have the blue one right and the left the eye that is the sum of the average of the downside movement okay those are the lines to check for giving us uh entry points signals or telling us where the trend is developing is bullish or bearish. Okay? Uh, we need to see. Uh, the crosses, these two lines crossing each other, okay, telling us there's a chance to go in into the market. Or when the positive one, the red one, crosses the blue one, okay, that's a buying signal for the indicator. Right? On the contrary, when the blue one catches the red one, that's the selling signal according to the indicator, right? Keep in mind that the crosses in between this red and blue lines are always measured downside up, okay? We read them downside up. We read from the lower to the upward, right? We don't see that the red is cutting the blue in this particular case, right? We don't read from upside down. On the contrary, downside up. That's the reading. So, what do I do when the blue one cross, uh, crosses, sorry, the red one? I sell. When the red one crosses the blue one, I buy. Right? That's a pretty basic concept. Uh, we have to filter that, okay? And there, when it came into play, this ADX one, okay? Uh, I will check just a second, okay? Uh, master, colors would be better red as less DI. Yeah, you're right, but you know, I have said them so many years ago this way, uh, you, you have a point there, okay? <laughs> uh, I have said them this way several years ago, and I'm so used to them. And the fact is that you can change the colors, right? Uh, anyone can, can choose the color that prefers. I have said them this way, and there they are since the 
um, beginning of the taste in trading for it. But you have a concept, <laughs> you have a, a point there of saying that uh, the red should be the negative one. <laughs> yeah, because I'm red candles are negative. Yeah, no doubt. I will try to keep it in mind, but I will probably be screwing my trading with that because I will be getting into the wrong side of the market if I change the color for myself. Anyway, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's funny. Anyway, <laughs> as we say, uh, uh, this combination will give you, give us the entry point. And this blue, ne black one, I'm sorry, the ADX itself is the one that's, uh, showing us whether, a uh, test filter, whether we could get into the market or not. Uh, the, the developer of the indicator says that as long as the ADX line, the black one, is above the 20 level, right? Uh, that's the signal of growing strength, okay? I usually set my indicator to 25. I prefer to see the indicator in readings above 25 and not 20, the classical setting for this indicator in, in particular, okay? Yes. If the indicator is below 25 or 20, as you may choose, that is telling me that the trend has no strength and the market is probably moving sideways. Okay? Sorry that I will remove that. Okay? Like in this case, right? Market was moving pretty sideways and the indicator was way under trend, telling me that there was no clear trend in the market at that point. Okay? So, I will be trying or attempting a buying or a selling using the crosses of the blue and the red ones only when the black line is above the 25 level. Okay? Only above that. Okay? <coughs> when, on the contrary, uh, the 40 line has also its use because let's say that I have made a trade in here follow this uh, bullish rally. Okay? And the indicator reach 60 level. Okay, the 40 line is there to tell me, okay, that the trend is completely over. A more conservative way than closing your trend just in 60. Okay, that's the confirmation. When the indicator cuts back at the 40, okay, like in this case, it's telling me the trend is over. As you can see, in this case, it's telling me that this bearish trend has been, uh, completed. Okay, a couple of candles away of the low of that bearish movement. So it's very important to take a look at that 40 level. On the contrary, when we see movements like today, that uh, are showing a downside uproar of that 40 level, right? Uh, it's telling me that the trend has enough strength to continue. Okay. Uh, remember. Uh, that the ADX line again is not telling us if the trend is bullish or bearish. It's just showing us the strength of that. Trend, okay. Uh, okay. So uh, about the triggers, uh, uh, crosses of the of the indicators. There are uh, ways to make those triggers buying, buying or selling signals. Sorry, even more stronger. I don't remember if I had example. I've seen an example in here in the in the daily charts or a smaller time frame. So give me a second. I will uh, look for a real example to share with you. Okay. And try to see if we can uh, explain it in here. Okay. In here we have one. Okay. I have the red line. Sorry. I love it. Okay. Here. I have the red line crossing the blue one giving me a buying signal right now. Okay. Around here. The indicator is about 20, so we, let's say that the reading is 5, okay? Usually, when the line that gave us the signal also crossed the ADX line, like in this case, okay, that's a confirmation of a stronger movement to come. And as you can see, the pair extended its rally after the cut, despite the indicator, the ADX transformed. It's very rare to see uh, the plus the or less VA cutting each other and then cutting also the ADX line. However, when they do, uh, let's see if we have a more clear example. Uh, like in this case, 
Okay, yeah, no, but the EADS line was not strong enough. Um, okay, let's return to that one. Not best, but there it is. Okay. Uh, when the indicator gave us the buying signal, right, and also got the other line, that's a sign of the strength and a probable upside continuation of that strength, right? That's uh, also a filter for for the signal mm -hmm. and telling us how strong it would be. Will it? Will it? Is oh, sorry, it is and will be. Okay, <laughs> um, you know this is a close oscillator. Close meaning it usually fluctuates between zero and one hundred. Okay, as I told you, reading uh, levels to watch would be twenty, forty, and sixty. As readings above sixty are extremely rare, while uh, cutting of forty is the the beginning of strength or the end of such strength, and that's why usually. Pay attention to always remember that under 20, when the teacher is under 20, is usually a no trade. Okay? Um, to filter the indicator, uh, what I tend to do if we move to smaller time frame, right? If we move to smaller time frame, is add indicators such as relative strength index of commodity channel index. Let's add just one as an example. Okay? I don't like to use too much indicators. Uh, I do believe that as more indicators we have, uh, as more mess it will be our trading. Okay, but what I tend to do usually is use the relative strength index to filter the ADX. Okay, if we have a buying signal or reading that the trend is uh, coming higher or lower, whatever, I check where my relative strength index is. If it's above 50, that will support fair bullish continuation. If it's under the 50 level, that will support a bearish movement. Okay? If I have a buying signal or a selling a buying signal, sorry, when the relative strength index is nearby 70, 80 the level you want to usually use, okay, I won't take that trade. On the contrary, if I have a selling signal, okay, with the relative strength index nearby that over both area, I will probably take the trade to them, right? Because it's filtering me and it's also telling me the trade is successful. However, if you take a look, the indicator, uh, the, the EDX, sorry, starts uh, saturating first before relative strength index and only when it's at 40 back to the downside, like in this zone as you can see, is when the bearish or the end of the bullish trend begins, right? Giving me a timid, a very side bearish uh, signal, right? At that cut of 40, tell me that the, the upside trend was exhausted and began the downside movement, right? Now, relative strength in this, in this case was extremely flat and saturated at the bottom. Yes, I do also add it as a picture. Anyway, I will check, uh, okay? Okay, I, I'm checking a bit. Okay. Uh, 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 the questions. Uh, Master FX1, what's for presentation? Sorry, I get a bit lost. I understand you're laughing. I'm doing with, I would be probably laughing too. Uh, uh, anyway, you know how we all check the uh, indicators. Okay, Boiki, uh, I don't see your Question, can exit also, ah, okay, sorry, I did, I missed it, sorry, boy, can exit also be an entry if not in trade? Good question, yeah, I do believe so, but I will wait, uh, maybe it will, it's a bit advanced to enter, uh, on a contrarian trade, one will reach 60, okay? Maybe it could be a bit earlier, maybe you should add a filter, uh, I don't know, maybe 50, not wait for 40 because maybe it will be a bit too late. But add a filter and filter with uh, another indicator, but that's, uh, yeah, a, a good counter trade entry. However, uh, as you may know, when the trend is extremely, extremely strong, indicators tend to saturate. ADX does not. ADX does not saturate as much as relative strength index or another safe kind of indicator. The fact that the indicator starts to fall is telling me that the, the trend is losing strength. Right? So yeah, I read in around 60 to be a counter trade 
X-ray opportunity. Good question. Okay. Uh, master, Andre says above 30, third training. Yeah, I said 25. My experience says that despite the, uh, developer of the indicator says that the level to watch is 20, I prefer, um, I prefer above 25. Uh, I'm, uh, since I'm less conservative than Andre. But yeah, I don't trust in the 20. Okay? I don't trust in the 20. Also. I prefer high, a bit higher, at least 25 minimum for me. Um, uh, AT, how do you scale CCI between 0 and 100? Okay, I will, uh, if you don't have more questions about ADX or how to filter or whatever, okay, uh, I will answer his, uh, his question, um, despite, uh, not exactly related to the webinar, but it's okay because as long as, sorry, as long as we have a, an educational session. Uh, the fact is that commodity channel indexes, you just ask me how do I, how do I level commodity channel index? And the fact is that I don't level CCI, CCI or where are you talking about relative strength index? Maybe you confuse indicators. Anyway, I don't use the commodity channel, I don't use the classic commodity channel index, sorry, of 100 and less 100. I usually set it to 200 and less 200 for almost every cross, okay, in the, which I apply it, and 160 level in both for, for Japanese chain crosses. I do believe that the 100 reading is a bit poor, but if you, this is an open indicator, this is not close like, uh, uh, ADX, right? This one does not move in between 0 and 100. It's oscillated free minus 1,000 to plus 1,000, <laughs> but uh, my settings are 200 and less 200. I usually uh, draw the zero line and 100 ones. I don't know what in this case are not there. I'd love to watch for me to read extreme oversold over both conditions are the 200 ones, right? And I don't like it for real. That's uh, another thing I should clear up. I don't use CCI for, for euro dollar. I'd rather use it with pound or Japanese cross, as I told you. Okay? Uh, ben, how do you trade if the ADX is below 20? You don't trade, at least not with this indicator or this strategy, right? The ADX below trade 20 is telling you that, uh, that the, there's no trend, the market is sideways. Okay, there's no strength in the market. So, reading standard 20 set means no trade, right? Uh, if in that case, is, I would say the same. When, when you are dedicated to trading, I do prefer having at least a couple of trading strategies, right? Just do one trading strategy or indicator or setting of indicators for market trend, when it's market trend, sorry, and another couple of settings for when the market is sideways. When the market is sideways, I usually turn my view to stochastic oscillator. I combine a fast and a 5 to 3, 3, sorry, and a slow, uh, I don't know, 14, 7, 3 oscillator, both oscillators, the smaller time frames, intraday talking. And when market is sideways, I apply that, for example. But rings under 20 means no trade with ADX. Um, Rajab. Do you wait for candles to close before deciding to trade? I usually, yes, wait for a new candle to open before entering the trade. Yes, I usually do. So, okay, uh, uh yeah. Close, current candle, close, next candle opening. Even if the candle is way too high like this one, for example, okay, I wait for a small pullback, okay. Uh, you may be missing the first part of the rally, but it's better that, uh, and have a technical confirmation. Okay, I lost connection. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, I did not lost the webinar. No, okay. Uh, okay, sorry, just lost <laughs> connection with MetaTrader. Uh, no problem. Ah, uh, we have reports right now. Okay, not a good idea to lose connection. <laughs> nice. Anyway, <laughs> Yeah, I, I prefer to wait. Uh, Jack, do you see euro dollar pullback in dollars in American session or continuing its on upward movement? Could euro reach 3440? <laughs> yes, the rebel good orders coming right now. I don't know how they can, but, 
I, uh, let me check if I can restart, uh, no, the Meta Trader. Uh, as usual, mark this law, you know, uh, once a report, a big report is out, Meta Trader is down. But <laughs> I don't trade with this Meta Trader. We will change with another one. Uh, Jack, the fact is that, uh, if this is my personal opinion regarding Euro, okay? Okay, reports seem to be, have been quite good as stocks are heading strongly higher, right? I think so, at least. But anyway, my market trader is down. What I will tell you about Euro is that, <coughs> uh, this is my personal opinion, okay? I do believe that today's rally is a bit of a reaction, okay? But what I do see is the market sentiment is extremely dollar bearish, right? Despite being Friday, and we have a risk aversion, Friday's market sentiment all the week, and one change on Fridays and so, uh, <laughs> yeah, Master, it didn't know one to me. Anyway, uh, I do believe that the euro could overcome that 3440 area, however, it seems pretty unlikely. Okay, in general, I have seen uh, I do believe that the moment was overreactive. If you take a look at for our chart, so what I've seen right now is that the 20 simple moving average is pretty, pretty bullish, okay? Yeah, around 33 or so in today's low, okay? Uh, so that supports further rises. And with markets extremely bearish despite, uh, in dollars, sorry, despite I don't like it that much, I think the pair would probably attempt to test uh, levels near 35. It's a good possibility. Uh, we have another report right now, or today also. We have housing reports, okay? So, uh, maybe we will see reactions, strong ones after that report, okay? Market will, will, will be waiting for the last news before deciding if euro will or will not break higher. I don't see breaking higher before that housing report. Range, it will break above, um, uh, 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 sorry, if, uh, if we regain that 34, if the report favors an upside rally, uh, 3440, sorry, the pair will approach to 35. And despite we could see some upside movements, as long as we remain about 3380, uh, the pair is bullish, okay? If we lost that level, maybe 3330 area, so that should be bottom for today. Anyway, if you don't have any more questions about ADX or uh, the educational session we talked about today, uh, I will have to wrap up the session, okay? Thank you all for being here. Uh, uh, thank you. I, I don't need a signal service, but, uh, you mean Jack? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know what she said, but I do believe. Anyway, as usual. My pleasure. Enjoy the last trading day of the week. Enjoy even much more the weekend. And see you next week, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks all.